We are live at 11.05 on BC. This is Spirit Cars. And uh, Josh, the voice of Spirit Cars behind the camera there. We've been working on this one a little bit. Um, I think I showed it last week. It's Rodney's car, right? Yes. So Rodney's had a car that we built, oh, I don't know, five, six years ago. And as we're looking at it, this was one of the first turnkey extended XLT extended Spirit cars that we did. So um, looking at it, we've We've made some real minor design changes on the frame over the five, six years, seven years, however long it's been. Um, but pretty much it's the same. We, um, I, was, I was with Sean even, and this may this may be the uh, the frame we built and, and actually made the modifications to the frame uh, table, uh, the jig table to to make the extended thing. So anyway, what what Rodney wanted, he wanted. Uh, I'll push this over here so you can see. He wanted uh, another four inches or so of legroom. So we decided if we cut it here, we just pull it forward, we're going to pull it forward four inches and uh, then re-glass re the whole thing back together. Project will show you when we're doing it. What I need to do first though is go ahead and get, uh, get my frame four inches longer. And now my back, I want to continue to keep my, my body where it was. I want my my bed to be in the same place in relationship to the wheels. Um, my body bolts, these are my body bolts here. So my body should be able to bolt in the same place. Um, the master cylinder we're going to leave in the same place so you can access it under this seat. But what I'm going to have to do when we get done, I've, I've left my um, brake pedal in the front side. So the brake pedal is going to come up through the, for, through the call where it did before. I'm leaving my a steering box in the same place so it's going to come down I'll have to change the angle just a little bit on the steering column because uh, because of that four inches it may give me a, another degree or so and the way we do it is it uh, fits really tight and nice so we need to make sure it fits better so there's been some discussion when we talked about doing it before about how you're going to do it you're going to see the frame you're going to do this or that and whatever so Sean's been getting it ready and uh, first thing is we need to make sure it's flat on the on something so since it's got the paint and everything else is going on rather than stick it back into the jig table and try to make it work there we took a couple two by three you can see them they're both two by three pieces of steel rectangle steel and they're straight so if we we set it on there and we clamp it down on that we, we're pretty assured that it's going to be straight uh, we're going to have to cut a four inch piece and stick it in there. So we'll have to have a four, four inch piece of um, two by three. I don't need to get it to show you. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> a piece of steel exactly like this will fit in there. But what we're going to do, instead of seeing it, we're going to sleeve it. And what that means is we've got these metal sleeves and we'll drill a hole and uh, drill a hole into other pieces and plug weld them in first. So these will be plug welded in, fitting in there. Fitting in there. So what we can do, he's he started to prep this. You can see we've got a big V right here. When the other one comes against it, what'll happen is, let me go ahead and get one up in here. You can see this. We can leave just a, an ever so slight gap there, whether it be a sixteenth or whatever, and we can weld all the way down into this piece that's in the sleeve, and we can get serious penetration even past your actual frame. We can get penetration all the way into the sleeve. So when we weld around this, that's going to be a. I mean, this is actually going to be a little bit stronger than the, than the the frame in that area. It'll be a little thicker. So. This one we're going to sleeve. You could see it. There's other ways. I mean, it could be butt welded uh, with the thickness of this for the extra time. I, I just, um, this is the way we've chose to do it. I feel secure in having it done this way. So that, that's how we're going to do it. The biggest thing when you go ahead and, and decide to extend your frame, really think about where you want to cut it. I cut it here. I add it here. It's accomplished leaving the body. It's accomplished my my brake pedal and my um, uh, master or my uh, steering box, all where they need to be. 
where if I had to cut it here, I'd have had to do extra work moving this. If I had to cut it back here, I'd have needed to do that. This one uh, is he's changing out the motor, or uh, not the motor, but the transmission to a 700 R4. So we're going to cut this trans cross member off and uh, put a, uh, a removable cross member in. So that, that will happen after. But right now it's good to hold the, the width of it. Um, sometimes if you're wanting to cut in the back here, you know, be aware that your radius rod bracket is going to have to stay with the rear end wherever that goes. Sometimes you might want to cut in the front uh, because you're wanting to go from a small block to a big block. And uh, in that case, you know, big block takes, on ours we have a, I think it's what, two, two, two inches? extra inches of clearance. We put two inches extra. It, it fits in the same motor mounts and it fits in the same trans mounts as a small block. But there's a little bit, it's just bigger and in the front you got a little, uh, a little tight on your radiator so we add two inches to our frame on a, on a big block um, so that's pretty simple for today uh, it's not a big long probably gonna be one of our shorter live 1105s but here's how we're doing it here's how you can do it key thing get it flat um, and if you're welding it's very easy even even when we weld like these brackets on if we're not careful it will warp the metal I mean that the heat of it will actually put a bow into the metal. So when he welds these, I'm sure he'll weld some here and weld some there and weld some here and weld some here. He just won't start in one spot and take the heat all the way around. And what what'll happen if he does that? It'll actually put a bow into the frame. So be careful on your welding um, that you don't don't do what what you don't want to do, the unintended, which is create a big bow and it's awful hard to get out if you do that. Pretty simple. It's just Think about it first. Make sure you got it sitting on something flat. Um, and it didn't take but a few minutes to make this jig. <laughs> we took a couple pieces of steel. You don't have to have some big fancy table. It's all perfect datum or anything. You can you can do this at home. And again, make sure that you've got a, a welder that's got plenty of amperage that's going to get good penetration. You don't want to you don't want a sloppy weld on a on a frame. I mean, it's not like you're welding the sheet metal on your or, on a on a body or something. This, it needs to be significant. So, come to the eye candy. Well, should we do some eye candy today? Yeah. Okay, a little bit of eye candy. Man, i seen that this morning. I don't even know what that's for. That's a, that's a, I don't even know what project that's for. It's going to be a cool one though. What, what is it going to? Is it 23, 32? 32. Oh, well, why not? Cool. This is probably what is it, winners? What, whose brand is this? Yeah, winners. There you go. So if you're thinking about one, I'm, we ain't even talk about how much it costs because I don't know, but I'm sure it wasn't cheap. But I know if I bought one for a car I had and I told my wife what they cost, I'd be in trouble probably. <laughs> You'd be sleeping with goats. <laughs> yeah, I'd be sleeping with the goats. If I told her what the goats are costing me, she'd probably have me sleeping with them. Pass it on. Coffee break contemplations. Pass it on. Pass it on. Okay. So for today, we, we cut the frame, we're moving it out, and probably at some point this week, if you see us, put the body back together, um, and uh, we'll make sure we, we show that. I've had a couple people uh, ask about doing that. A uh, couple things. Our audience, I guess, is growing a little bit, not in leaps and bounds, but one or two here and 10 or 20 there, That's, and we appreciate you watching. If you do like to watch it live, um, we have still done nothing to improve our technology to get it out to you, and there's a lot we can do. But um, So we can't answer your questions at this point live. So if you may be questioning or saying, we'll check it in the next, you know, as soon as I get done here, I'll go in the office and we try to answer all the questions right away, and Josh is on it. There's a button somewhere, if you are watching it live right now, that you can push that button and it notifies you when we go live if you do want to watch it like that. Uh, Josh had an idea this morning. Uh, about doing just uh, sit down at the desk and do go through uh, questions and answers. He gets a lot of questions from folks, and uh, um, we can just kind of go down a list of that. And when we do that, we can probably set it up with a computer. Yes. So, so we'll set it up with a computer, <coughs> and then we can do live questions too. So that we'll do that. And uh, I guess that's about it. Anything else? I feel like 
the end of church now. We're doing announce, <laughs> doing yeah. announcements. And with the chili dinner is going to be at City. It's okay, blah, blah, blah. All right. Oh, this is a good one. I like this one. So this fits for me today, whether it fits for anybody else. To learn to love and enjoy life is a great gift. To teach children to love each other and enjoy life is a gift to the world. So, yeah, we had the grandbabies over the other day, and they're, I'm just enjoying my grandkids. You've done well, Josh. Sophia's good. <laughs> I love them all. So, okay, for today, that's it. See you tomorrow.